Minam Wenikwa Sweetska Ilp Ilp. My name is Red Spike Elk. In Nez Perce, that means uh, Red Spike Elk, and, and that's uh, from my father's side. I'm Nimipu and Cayuse. And on my mother's side, I'm Slinka and Haida. And I'm born here in Portland, and I've been here my whole life. I think, I think a lot of times, uh, for me personally, there's a lot of distrust and a lot of hesitance in p participating in institutions. One of them being like going to a hospital and the historical trauma for our people having been treated the way we've been treated, you know, in all aspects of our life, including just getting uh, healthcare in any form. My name is Erin Angus. I'm a monkey descendant from Virginia. I was born and raised in Portland, Oregon. I think the biggest, starkest difference that I see is in community, we gather to heal and we don't heal alone. And we know how to heal. We know what we need. And if we don't know, we know who to ask. Somebody will see us. Somebody will say something. Somebody will reach out to us. On the other hand, it's individualized. Everything's on the individual. Everything's between you and somebody else that is a stranger to you, who doesn't understand you, doesn't understand what you're going through, and you're just a time slot. But in my experience, we heal when we come together in community. So a little bit of history about our canoe culture is that originally, our, our coastal tribes and our, our river tribes had a vast traveling landscape that in, included the rivers and, and the ocean, and that supported our ways of life for our seasonal rounds and just um, our whole economy was based on our travel in the canoes. So uh, upon colonization with our longhouses and our, and our canoes and our totem poles and you know, everything that we, we hold dear and sacred, the salmon and the buffalo, all our food sources, it all had to go. After years and years and years of our traditions being practiced in secret and in hiding and, and carried on that way, there was a resurgence that happened where we were not gonna be persecuted anymore. So the canoe really, it, it represents a lot um, of resurgence of our culture and offers a deep, deeper understanding with the with the rivers and the and the water and that you know that's pretty powerful. We all show up to these practices wherever we're at on that day. All of us. But we know once we show up things are gonna be okay because we need each other. And the water carries all of us. We you know we have connection, we have understanding. We're surrounded by other parents and other family. We're surrounded by children. And our canoe family, um, sometimes all we do is just show up for each other. Well, for my family, the canoe journey has been really powerful because it's brought back a lot of our old ways and our, and our connection to the river and our connection to the water. We're in a relationship with them and uh, we have uh, boundaries and we have obligations to stay in good relationship. You know, if we pollute the water, then we, we don't have a good water to drink. We, we have a really important role in our own health, in our own future. And talking to our families, and talking to our friends and communities, and opening up about things that hurt, or where we don't, where we feel vulnerable, it's really hard to do, but once you learn that it works, and that it's good, and you're surrounded by people who really care for you. It's powerful, it's life-changing. The things that are most powerful to me have been just keeping my ears open and, and hearing like quotes from the youth, like, this was the most amazing thing I've ever done, and like, I never want to stop paddling. When you hear like a six-year-old say something like that, that, that makes me come back every time. It's brought us a lot of healing and a lot of uh, tightening in our relationship and, and our understanding of, of what it means to be close and to, to work together. And, and I think that has extended outside of my family and to our canoe family and, and really to our community.